Thank you for that introduction. Hi everyone, grab a seat. Uh, still a couple of people coming in. So, um, welcome to my talk on Gravitino. And Gravitino is a multi-region geo-distributed metadata data lake, and that's a mouthful. <laughs> and it's it's a metadata data lake, not a metadata lake. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, so uh, just first up a tiny bit about myself. Welcome, grab a seat. We've only started. You haven't missed anything. So uh, I, there's uh, a few faces I'm uh, familiar in, in the crowd, but there's certainly a lot that I don't know. Uh, so I've been involved at the ASF for more than a decade now. Um, is, is anyone here have, involved in the incubator or has an incubating project? Yeah, you probably know me. And I may have voted on your release, and I may have voted minus one. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I, I'm currently one of the ASF board members, I'm the VP of the Incubator and I help and mentor projects there uh, and I'm also an ASF member. But enough about that. Um, so we're talking about Gravitino today and I'm actually going to do a live demo, so fingers crossed the demo pods are kind to me. Um, I found out earlier, just before I gave this talk, that every time I open and close my laptop I get a new IP address. And that IP address is hard coded in a config file for my demo to work. So <laughs> we'll see what has happened. <laughs> anyway, I can I can I can cover up from that if, if, if it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about uh, Reptino and show you what it's, it's capable of. Uh, give you a little demo of the UI um, and how you can run SQL queries and also uh, a couple of little commands to show its REST interface off. And then we'll wrap up and have some questions. So, this is the reason why Gravitino exists. Um, if you're a large organisation, you're going to be using lots of technology, as we heard in the previous talk. Right? It was all about 30 technologies. Um, and you can see that quite easily you, you have multiple clouds that you're using. You may use AWS, Azure, or Google. Uh, you may have public clouds, you may have private clouds. And then you've got all these other bits of technology that are there and um, all of these things has data that is important to you but you can't get it at all. Well you can but you can't get it at it easily. It's scattered all over the place um, and it might be even scattered across different continents uh, and you know there's all sorts of issues with transferring data across international lines and things like that. So this is why Gravitino came into existence and you can think of it as something that sets sits above all of the catalogs that you've got there and it becomes a metadata catalog. So it can connect to different data sources uh, that you have. Uh, it will automatically build the metadata for you uh, and then uh, you can actually see you know, what data you have. So that's the, you know, the first basic thing uh, that it can be used for. Um, it can also help with data governance. It can also help with uh, data versioning. Uh, and a whole lot of other applications as well. And I'll go into a, a little bit of detail about that. So, uh, as I was saying, you know, it's, it's hard when you've got this, this picture of that here, here. It's really hard to see what data you have. It's hard to understand the data that you have and understand the connection between it. Or even how you might, if you could view all this data in one spot, you could actually say, hey, wait a minute, what happens if I join that to that over there? And we can actually get some useful insights into, into what's going on. One of the other big problems is quite often if you want to get any interesting insights on this data, you've got to move all the data around and you've got to change it from one form to another form. So you spend all your time building these pipelines to, to change data from one form into another, uh, but wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to do that at all? Um, because you are copying all this data around, it gets out of date. It may not be 100% accurate, um, and there's no single source of truth. So eventually, you, you, you're going to, in some cases, you get confusion over where where you need to get the data from and what is the most accurate data. And, and, and so forth. Um, the other thing is that if you've got all this data in, in, in multiple clouds and multiple regions, and it's a large amount of data, transferring it around is expensive, and it takes time. Um, so. These are all the sort of problems that we, we, we want to try and get Gravitino to solve. Um, it, it's also hard to secure your data as well, um, and it's hard to do data governance. 
and, um, and again, this is one of the things that we're, we're looking at. The data governance thing is, is not built into the product at the moment, but it's one of the next big features that we're going to be able to do. So, it was asked, uh, how's the open source version of the product going? Um, and the answer is, it just got accepted into the ASF incubator two hours ago. <laughs> So we are now an ASF project, <laughs> which, is, which is great to hear. Um, we had always intended to donate it to the ASF, uh, and the main reason for that is that it uses a whole lot of other Apache projects. Uh, it uses Hive, Hadoop, Spark, Doris, uh, Kafka, so, uh, and others. So, you know, it's part of the ASF ecosystem, and uh, it would be great uh, yeah, that's, that's where we should live. So yes, so it's finally happening. And it is, um, I was employee number four of, of the company who started this project, and I joined them exactly a year ago tomorrow. So, <laughs> so in that time, uh, we've managed to build an open source product and donate it to a foundation in the space of the which is fantastic. So just talking about the community, um, before we came to the ASF, by today, uh, we have made eight releases. Uh, we have 76 external contributors. Uh, we have 1,850 PRs, about 1,900 issues. Uh, we've got an okay count, star count. We could have more stars. Some other projects are certainly more popular. Um, but there are a lot of people using. We have 160 plus books. Uh, and we don't know what all of those people are doing with that. <laughs> so if you had forked it, uh, speak to me. Tell me what you're doing. It would be really interesting to know. So um, we are, uh, the majority of our contributors are from one company currently. And that's another reason why we came to the ASF incubator, because we wanted to expand the group of people that use us and become a vendor neutral product. There's some other products that are in this space, and almost all of them are either closed source or controlled by a single vendor. And we really think that has risks, uh, and this is why we've done it. So, um, we're just talking about, you know, the, to give you an idea of how we're progressing in terms of functionality, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the last three releases. And then, um, I'm actually going to do a demo and show that. So in February of this year, we released version 0.4. It included uh, an improved UI. Uh, it also included some functionality for partition support in uh, Hive, and um, also things like auto comment and default values for columns uh, in, in Postgres and, and things like that. And uh, it also supports MySQL as well. Um, and so, that, and so that there's some work around queries and in particular query optimization. So one of the other features that we're working on is the idea is that the Gravitino can be a distributed system. So you can, you can use it in two ways. You can have a, a single Gravitino server and then that can talk to other data sources like Postgres or MySQL or Kafka or whatever. Um, and you can query all the information to get there. But that runs into the problem of what I was saying before, if you are geographically dispersed, you've got to transfer all, those, all that data when you're doing that. So the other way of using it is that you can have multiple Gravitino nodes, and then multiple nodes talk to each other, and if you run a query, it'll actually try to understand what the query is doing and break it up and push the subqueries down to the other Gravitino servers, run the queries there, the subqueries, and then transfer the results back. So you're not transferring all this data around the world at all. So that can increase performance and reduce cost. And there's about uh, half a dozen query optimizations that we've got in there to help with that so far, but we're, we're working on some more as well. So uh, 0.5 was in April, and again we, we had some improvements to the UI. Uh, we added support for Spark, Kafka, and Doris. We also added a Python client. Um, uh, initially, we just had a Java client. The Gravitino itself is written in Java, but a lot of people in this space use Python. So it, it made sense to, to add a Python client. And we're also all getting requests 
from some of the other external companies that are using this to have you know, some sort of security mechanism around it. So we've actually built in a permissions framework, uh, and the point five was the first iteration of that, and that's using Apache Ranger. Does anyone know Apache Ranger? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And um, yesterday, we released 0.5.1, and um, that has support for Spark 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5. It also supports Trino in a distributed mode. So again, Trino has a similar concept uh, to, to what I was mentioning before, where you can have multiple Trino servers that talk to each other. Um, we've put some security improvements in there. So when you're talking to Hive and Hadoop, you can pass on user authentication between them, and we've improved the Python client. But um, that's not what you want to hear. So to Let me show you what this Let's go to a demo. So here we have the Gravitino UI. Um, I'm sorry if that's a little bit small to read up from up the back. But we have a single metal lake here, and if I click on this metal lake, it has some catalogs in it, and the catalogs are a hive catalog, an iceberg catalog, and a Postgres catalog. Now if we have a look at the hive catalog, we have some this is just the metadata that it's displaying here. It has inside there a sales database and inside that we have you know, the things that are typically in a sales database. So we've got some uh, store data, some sales information, customer information, products and categories. And you can see here that it's displaying the metadata for each of those tables. So it'll tell you what the columns are, uh, you know, a little bit of information about those columns. Uh, and, and that's all it does. You can't actually get at the data here uh, directly, uh, but that's not its purpose. And if we have a look, again, have a look at Postgres, we've got uh, a HR database. So that includes information on employees. Right. Um, this, what I'm demonstrating here is we have a, a thing called the Gravitino Playground, which is a whole lot of Docker instances. Uh, yeah, so it's, that's it here. So you can see that it's running Postgres, MySQL, Spark, Hive, Gravitino, and Trino. So you can get this up and running really quickly and just have a little bit of a play with it uh, to you know, find out whether this suits your, your needs or not. So just going back to here, so we've got all this metadata. And this, this metadata, by the way, was uh, automatically generated by Gravitino. Once you hook it to a data source, it'll actually query that data source and find out what it's got inside it. So there's no manual creation of all this metadata or maintaining the metadata. You get it all there uh, uh, straight away. So let's do something a little more interesting. Let's, so this is a debugger, and I've hooked this up to Trino, and I can run some queries in it. So this is, this is a very simple query up the top here. Um, it's just going to have a look at the sales data and give me you know, uh, the states with the most number of sales by data. Uh, that's something pretty simple that I'm sure everyone here has done on some sort of data, but a very similar sort of query. Now that is just talking to the high database. Where this becomes much more interesting is that you can do cross joins between different data sources. So in this next query here, we've got an employee's average performance rating and their total sales. So that needs to go to the HR database and the sales database and join those two information together. You can see there that it actually mentions the catalog. So that's Postgres catalog, Postgres catalog, and here's five catalog. And if I run that, you can see the data comes back. Can everyone see how useful that would be? In, yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, and and we're, we're adding more than different types of um, data sources. So it's not only databases. So we're going to have that there will be have Kafka for support for streaming. And we also have uh, file set support as well. Uh, so, you know, eventually, we can't quite do it yet, but eventually you'll be able to, you know, join Kafka with Postgres with data you've got in S3. Okay, and just join that. Let's just do a couple, you know, more complex queries. So this here is... Yeah, so this is the total value of sales and the number of sales per month for 2023 in Nebraska. 
for expensive products. So what I've got, the setup here, I've got well, I've got everything running on Docker, but it works exactly the same as if all of these data sources were somewhere on AWS or Azure. And I, in fact, I can do queries between an AWS account in Australia and an Azure account in the US. Um, I didn't want to risk doing that in a live demo, <laughs> but you, you, you can take my word for it. It, it, it works. Uh, so let's just have a, a quick look at, at something else here. So we also have a, a REST interface. And I can, for example, say, give me a list of all the meta lights that you have there, just by doing a curl command to, to that. Uh, or I can say, you know, give me uh, a list of all the catalogs inside the Hive catalog there. Uh, and you can also send a post request, so you can actually create things. So uh, hopefully this will work. But, uh, as I said, it may not. So, uh, no. <laughs> oh well, uh, I'll just try that one alternative way. So let's, um, let's say create metalite. Oh, no. so, let's create a new panel up here. Okay. And let's make it a messaging catalog. And that's Kafka. So I have Kafka running locally here, if that's not actually running in Docker. Uh, and if we have a look at this, yay, we just need some topics. <laughs> so, excellent. Yeah, demo gods work. Let's go back to my slide. So that's just sort of like a, a, a brief overview of, of Prevotino. Um, and I've shown you how you, know, you can use it to discover what data you have from you know, your various data sources. Um, we, um, I've also shown you how you can support, you know, it supports multiple data sources, it supports uh, multiple cloud vendors that can also run in multiple regions, so you can join all of those things together. Uh, it has a REST interface, uh, so you can create via that for anything that supports REST. We also have Java and Python APIs. I haven't shown you those, but if you uh, want to integrate Gravitino into a bigger product, that would maybe one way you'd want to do it rather than REST. Um, and as I said, the, the, the things that you can use it for include um, you know, discovering data. You can also, what we're working on as far as the data governance is we're putting extra metadata, we're tagging the metadata that we already have so that uh, if you know some properties about this metadata, you know what boundaries not to move it across. So say I had a whole lot of uh, customer data inside Australia and I wanted to transfer that to a US in a query, this would be, the, the data in Australia would be tagged as being personal private information that couldn't be transferred to the US. And then if I did that query, that data would automatically get removed as it got transferred across or anonymized. So um, it can certainly help with things like that. Uh, the best thing about it, and I know we're at an open source uh, conference here, but it is under the Apache license, uh, which is a permissive license, and it is now, as of today, an ASF project. So <laughs> that's great news. Um, and we have a growing community behind us. We have, as I said, uh, about we've had about 76 people. Uh, contribute to it externally. We have a large number of companies who are using it, uh, who are looking at it. We have about 20 vendors. A lot of those are in the, you know, the top 20 so companies in IT. I can't say the names, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, at that age, they are currently evaluating. Uh, and we do have a, a couple of external companies who are active to do this uh, right at this very instant. But the, you know, we have just joined the incubator and we want to help grow our community. And um, yeah, hopefully I inspired some of you to help help come join us. You know, we're, 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 we're just become an NPA project this very today, so you, you, know, you couldn't be here at a better time. It's the best place to jump onto a bit of new technology. So um, I'm going to open it up for questions. Thanks, thanks a lot, Justin. Uh, big clap to, to Justin before questions.